Well, it's been a while since I've done any sort of tech news. Uh, I've been wrapped up working on a Threadripper work slash gaming station for someone, and that's taken up the bulk of my time, including real life issues. Anyway, let's move on. Some good and bad news about Vega, as if there isn't enough already. Supposedly, there's going to be a shortage of RX Vega GPUs until October. August. Jesus, that's a while. Earlier this year, an exclusive story that was had on Tweaker Town, I believe. Tweaker Town, that sounds like Tweak Town, sorry. Tweaker Town is tweakers or meth heads or speed heads, I believe. I can't remember. Only having 16,000 units of the RX Vega graphics cards at most preceding the launch. I do remember this news popping up months ago, and I guess there must have been some credence to it because there are like no Vegas to be had right now. According to DigiTime sources, AMD won't have any RX Vega in larger numbers until October. So if it's anything like how we've been dealing with Vega, where it just kept getting pushed back months and months, we'll probably get close to October and then they'll be like, it'll come at the end of October. Uh, more Vega in November. And by then you may as well sit back, wait till like January and that's when Nvidia will tease Volta most likely. And then Vega will shit itself. I hate you and I hate Nvidia. Other sources are claiming that AMD is having issues with their advanced semiconductor engineering packaging technology. It doesn't matter what problems AMD is having. From their perspective, the Vega launch is nothing but a gigantic success. But then you're reading comments from people all over the internet calling the Vega launch the worst GPU launch ever. And that it's worse than Fermi GTX 480 launch. And all I can do is agree. Yes, it isn't good and we're not getting the full truth from AMD. The other thing that sucks is that AMD had such great success with Ryzen and Threadripper, but Vega wasn't just mediocre, it had bombed. And I must agree that Vega is a huge letdown. This is a, I remember when Fury X came out and I felt like that was a letdown, but I didn't feel like it was this completely hopeless situation, you know? And I know there will be people who will be mad at me for saying that and want to stay positive on AMD. Yes, Threadripper are awesome. They're fantastic. They've shaken up the CPU game. But Vega is nothing that we were told it was going to be. And I know some people say we were expecting too much. And I say to them, go back to the first uh, Vega reveal at, like, what was I can't even remember which computer tech expo it was. But I remember it was the first one. Roger Kaduri comes out. He's holding up this stuff. He's talking about Vega. He wasn't holding it up, but he was like showing off like a t-shirt with that stupid ass Vega logo. I mean, it's not dumb, but now I look back, I was like, whoopee, a t-shirt. Eat my asshole, Roger. Oh, I hate you even more. But the point being, you know, you're sitting there like we're aiming past Pascal and everybody made the excuse. Oh, well, you know, uh, at the time they were making Vega, only the 1080 was out. And it's like, come on, dude. You're going to tell me AMD, who's been battling NVIDIA longer than some of us have been alive, all of a sudden doesn't know a TI is coming? Everybody and their fucking mother knew the TI was coming. My cat knows the TI is coming. And that motherfucker eats paper. Let's move on to the next story that isn't exactly glowing for Vega. I know. This seems like a hit piece almost. Uh, this one's from Video Cards, where they tell of an interesting story that was published by Tom's Hardware. There were tons of rumors about the Vega 10 arriving in different variants. I'm pretty sure we're all probably thinking like, you know, there were there was like three variants of Vega that were supposed to come out and like one that would kick the 1070, one would kick the 1080, and the other one was supposed to kick the 1080 Ti's ass. But it's not what we think it was. According to Tom's Hardware, there are at least three variants of the Vega 10. These variants come from different factories, which equip the Vega 10 with different memory chips. The main difference is a lack of molding on the non-resin variants. These chips are reportedly harder to use for custom designs as the GPU is 40 microns higher than the HBM2 modules. It's also worth noting that my phone is going off. It's also worth noting that molded and unmolded designs have a one point millimeter difference in a higher GPU. I think the micron is like what, one ten thousandth of, let me look this up. It's a metric unit of length equal to one million of a meter. One millionth of a meter, sorry. God damn it. It's easier reading about bike parts. This is actually a bigger issue than it may sound. If that wasn't enough, there's also allegedly a fourth resin variant structure for the Vega 56. Really? 
The other three were pictured by Tom's hardware. Of course, there'll be a photo. Variant one, Exploit resin made in Taiwan for Vega 64, Samsung HBM2. Variant number two is made in South Korea for the Vega 56, SK Hinx HBM2, probably saying that wrong. Variant three, resinless made in Taiwan for engineering boards. The existence of multiple variants causes a lot of problems for board partners. One could think that the 0.1 millimeter difference is insignificant, but it's already causing a lot of production issues. According to TH Board's partners, are experimenting with different screw lengths to avoid potential heat problems. It may not be an issue for the GPU cooling, but bear in mind, the cooler is also attached to the VRAM section as a small difference there means that the cooler is also misangled elsewhere. What's also interesting is the fact that AMD is, what's also interesting is that AMD has a special presentation for board partners explaining the difference in all of the Vega 10 variants. The slides were published by Tom's Hardware as well. This is actually becoming a bigger clusterfuck than I thought. And now this probably explains why there's a huge shortage on Vega and there won't be anything till October most likely. What a fuck fest. I mean, just looking at this slide is utterly insane. Well, it's not insane. I'm looking at it and it's surprising to see this much of a variation in the same, like, I have, I don't know what to even say to this, just looking at it. It's kind of a, kind of depressing, really. Maybe this is why they also boosted the price of the Vega cards, huh? Well, we made some extra mistakes. So, to make up for us having to spend extra cash to get these cards up and out to you, we're boosting the price. Thumbs up, guys. Now, I came across this, uh foreign site. I can't remember if it's Russian or Swedish because I translated it and I totally forgot. Who the hell is this? Of course. Of course. Someone calls me to come to the house to fix something. What the fuck am I? I feel like I'm goddamn like, what's that group of people at Best Buy that fix stuff? Uh, the Geek Squad, but then also the Home Improvement Squad, but nobody wants to pay my ass. I gotta get, I, I, I gotta get out of here. I'm telling you guys. If YouTube doesn't make me a star, I'm fucked. I'm gonna be an indentured servant the rest of my life. I already know what slavery is like. Every day I'm a slave. They need to make a new movie. Forget 12 years a slave. Every day a slave. Starring Gundam. All right, I need to get serious. Let's just move on with this. In terms of software, the people behind this use the latest Radeon software Crimson Relive Edition 17.8.1. This also continues to provide faulty clock rates in the display for some settings that they have therefore not yet familiarized with Wattman, but tried with the third party tool, which is not yet actually ad adapted to the Vegas series, but apparently works with Watt Tool 0.92. Theoretically, the same settings are also provided with Wattman. Furthermore, not only the clock display can be trusted, but also the lowering of the voltage shown to be validated. Very a lower current requirement for this purpose. The people behind this are monitoring the power consumption of the entire system. All right, the people of Hardware Lux were able to reduce the voltage of the Vega 64 from 50, 1150 or 1200 millivolts to 1110 millivolts, but they landed at 1.538 megahertz at a clock. This means a reduction of 8% in voltage. At some time, however, they were able to increase the cycle by almost 10% in extreme cases. Thus, the corresponding increase in performance can be seen over a large number of games in which the boost cycle has not been too high before. They have tested this with some games. The corresponding diagrams I will upload here. The undervolting potential of the Vega 56 is somewhat higher here. They were able to reduce the GPU voltage from 1200 millivolts to 1070 millivolts or 1.70 millivolts, a 12% decrease and maintain the clock speed of 1600 megahertz, an increase of almost 25% in extreme cases. In part, the Radeon RX Vega 56 reduces its clock rate to their test to 1300 megahertz. In this respect, the 1.63, uh, the 1600 megahertz achieved was a very good result. This also reflects the reduction in power consumption by 73 watts. 
and I will add the charts below to give you an idea of what was done here. Overall, it's, hmm, you know what? You know what's weird? The Vega 56 performs just about as well as the Vega 64. In fact, like within spitting distance, in some games, it's as little as a single frame. And the power consumption is at least 100 watts lower. So pulling this off yourself with a Vega 56 would be the road to go, especially if you're good at overvolting or undervolting your GPU. I'm not the greatest GPU uh, overclocker. I have tried undervolting when I messed up my 1080 Ti. I mean my 980 Ti, but th that's another story for another day. That has nothing to do with the story. It's quite astonishing how much is gained by undervolting the two cards. The Radeon Vega 64 and 56 benefit greatly in terms of performance and power saving requirements. It can be clearly seen that the RX Vega 64 is already quite close to the limit and there is little potential for it. But on the other hand, the RX Vega 56, we see a large scope which should also be used by anyone who loves building. The results for the Radeon Vega 64 are as followed. In terms of performance, the GTX 1080 Founders Edition is quite clear. We have no values for undervolting of the competition cards here. These values only as a reference point. It would be unfair to compare a low voltage card with one in the delivery state. At the same time, the undervolting of the RX Vega 56 means a significant reduction in power consumption, even if it's still part of the current single GPU cards. Currently, however, the undervolting is still quite complicated. Since the software cannot be trusted, indicators for the clock do not have to be correct, and if the voltage has been accepted, is only ensured by a glance at the consumption. A simple setting of values in the software is not enough at the moment. Everything has to be validated. So if you have a Vega 56 card and you're pretty, you know, comfortable with your ability to undervolt and you know your way around Wattman and the other variants, it's worth giving a shot. I recall Gamers Nexus, I heard something about him doing stuff like this and not having a great time with it. But me and him don't speak, so I don't ask questions and I don't really hop on his videos too often. So maybe you'll find something more there, more information most likely. But uh, this is pretty sweet for anyone who has a 56 card. 64, this is also good, but really the real gain here and the real positive note is the Vega 56. It is within striking distance of its bigger brother at a lower price, which is quite impressive in my personal opinion. I hope this is actually helpful to someone who actually has a card. And on that note, I spent enough time bumbling around this article with my Google Translate. That's gonna do it for me. Can't actually give more of a shit than me. Rate, comment, subscribe if so choose to. If not, Fuck it, no big deal, you know, no big whoop. But remember, the more of you that support me, the more likely the industry will pay me attention and give me some respect. And maybe I can get away from friends and family members who treat me like a goddamn slave. Fix this, fix that. I need to borrow money, help me. Uh, uh, uh. One day I'm gonna fucking run away, dude, and no one will find me again. God, this got dark.